Funded girlfriend's college education with my hard-earned money, but she cheated on me while attending parties. I never thought I would share something like this publicly, but here we are. I guess I'm just trying to process and get over what happened and move on as soon as possible because this thing shattered me mentally and physically. I work in a healthcare center as a registered dietitian. That's where I met Jules. My GF of three years. She worked there as a receptionist. I got instantly attracted to her because of her humble and polite behavior. Not only that, she was way smart to be a receptionist. Humbleness and politeness was a trait required for a receptionist, but her ability to take up multiple tasks was amazing. She soon started taking care of the accounts and other office work at the healthcare center. I asked her out for dinner during one of the hectic days and that's how it started. Knowing her, I got to know Jules was a very bright student and brilliant academically but due to her family issues, she couldn't complete her education. Her father was an addict and her mother was hardly present. Jules had to take care of her sibling and household chores while her mother slogged two jobs to feed four children. Jules couldn't pursue college because she had to take up jobs to support her family. I felt so bad and wanted to help her because she deserved to become what she always thought as a child and so I decided to fund her college and help her with the college expenses. She denied taking any help from me and said that she would save and have it of her own. She had been working for five years and looking at her savings rate, it wasn't a realistic plan at all. This was not her fault at all because she had to send a substantial amount of her salary to her house. After a lot of analyzing and discussing, she agreed. Last autumn she started college and she moved to the college dorm which was in the adjacent city. We have met only twice after her college, during her holidays and she was happy to get back to studies after so many years. During her last semester break, she visited me. This time she told me about her worries, that she was not able to fit in the college society and was left out because she didn't have as many resources as other girls. I asked her not to worry about things like that and to focus on her academics. She immediately got annoyed at me for not understanding how embarrassing it is sometimes when all her friends head out for a night out, but she couldn't because she cannot afford it. She said it was not just about one odd night but a regular thing. Her friends and classmates wore the latest fashion while she felt outdated. Ever since she started college, she became very body conscious and tried hard to fit in with the so-called college society norms. I assured her that I was able to understand her feelings but advised her that instead of feeling it in this way, she should be grateful that she was in college and now would be able to earn better jobs. Her situation makes sense as she never had those lifestyles or stuff as a kid and was completely abandoned, so it was her complete right to live her life, but I find her behavior rather immature. She should have understood that her situation was not like others who were parents funded. To cheer her up, I took her out to one of the most happening cafes in the town. Jules saw a few of her college mates and asked me to go somewhere else. I asked her what's wrong if they see us together, but she held my hand tightly and told me that she was not wearing a proper dress and that she didn't want any of them to see her like that. I got really frustrated at her behavior but didn't say a word that might hurt her and left the cafe. This was just not one incident, she's getting more into materialistic and superficial stuff. She has also been acting too rebellious and unpredictable these days. Day by day, her desires were getting out of my pocket, and it's not like I didn't have money, but her actions were rather immature. The money that I gave her for emergency funds, she started wasting it on useless things. Now, if I refuse her for anything, it leads her to have an extreme emotional breakdown and victim play of calling herself a poor and unlucky woman, which I hated the most about her personality. No matter how much I loved her I would never disagree with the fact that it was straight emotional manipulation and even when I was doing everything for her, she didn't really appreciate it. She always played a victim card on me, which melted my heart and led me to do things that made me uncomfortable doing so. After the argument, there were still a few days left for her college to start, but she left, giving me the false excuse that she was in need of money and wanted to do a side hustle. I asked her not to waste her strength earning for stupid things, to make good use of her time, and to do her best academically. I also asked her to not lose focus on the important thing that she always dreamed of. She again got annoyed at me for not understanding her point of view, so I asked her to do whatever she wanted. She blamed me for not letting her live the life. I had to remind her that I was funding money for her education and not for her lifestyle. She started crying and told me that I was looking down on her for being poor and not privileged enough like me. I apologized and asked her to stay, but she didn't and left the same night. I'm a very private introverted person and stay off the addiction to social media. So was Jules, earlier she used to be so busy in her life with work and household chores that she didn't have time for mindless social media scrolling, but after getting into college, she has become addicted to following trends and being part of a fast-paced society and being a social butterfly was one of them. The other day I got a call from Jules for immediate help that she needs money to participate in a science competition. I got really happy and asked her to tell me the amount, which I would send right away. She told me it was $500, and I stopped thinking for a minute. I have also participated in a science competition but they never asked for such a huge amount for a science competition. I tasked her with telling me why she needed this amount of money and told her not to lie. She remained silent and hung up the call. I called her again and again, but she didn't respond, and my irritation was above the bar. 
Her attitude was unbearable, and instead of being grateful and appreciative, she was making me feel like I was not doing enough for her. Even though she was the person who was continuously lying and hiding things, she made me feel like I was the culprit. Her attitude is making me anxious. Earlier, we used to call and FaceTime each other regularly, but after that fight, she didn't call or text me for many days. I decided not to call or text her this time and wait for her to do so and if she didn't I would visit her at the college. After a week, I got a text from her saying she was busy with her assignments and that she would call me at night. I stayed up until late in the night, waiting for her to call, but she didn't. A few days later, I got a text from my school friend Jacob who is from the same city as Jules College. He said he was at a party last weekend and there were many people from my girlfriend's university. He said he saw a woman at the party who looked like Jules but it was too dark and she was drunk and with a guy so he didn't approach her. That really sparked my curiosity, so I asked him if he had any pictures. It was indeed Jules, wearing a very inappropriately revealing dress, drolling over a guy, drunk. It felt so disgusting to see her like that because she never touched alcohol. I zoomed in again and again to make sure it was her because obviously, it was hard to believe the person you love turns out to be completely different. Look, I'm not a controlling type of person, but hiding something from your partner is actually considered a form of cheating, and my stomach dropped when I witnessed such a thing. I never went to parties without her, or if I ever did, Jules knew and created a drama out of it, and now she was doing the complete opposite of what she asked me to do. The same night I got a call from her, and we finally had a conversation for hours. She told me about her college stuff and that she had a full week off. The whole time I was talking to her, I was waiting for her to talk about the party but she didn't. I couldn't hold myself and asked her about it. Man, she denied it outrightly and told me that she doesn't like having parties at all. I was just so shocked at her nonchalant lies. I feel done with her now. Update 1, so, I visited her college. I guess I was delusional about ignoring such things, so I finally decided to make a surprise visit to her college and see what's the matter with her. It was clear that something like that was going to happen sooner or later, and honestly, deep down I was prepared for that. After reaching her, I called her, but she didn't respond to my calls. I got really mad at her for doing this to me. I mean it was not just about missing one call. I called her multiple times for almost more than an hour and she kept ignoring me, what if there was some sort of emergency? Her behavior was alarming, and I could not predict or draw any conclusions. I checked into a hotel. She called me the same night, and I told her that I waited for her outside her dorm. Her response was cold toward me. Instead of being sorry about her carelessness, she just said she was busy. We had a huge argument on this and I hung up the call. After a while, God knows what she thought, she called me. I ignored it. After several calls, when I finally responded, she apologized and asked for my location. She was there in my hotel room within an hour. She looked exhausted and her eyes were red as if she hadn't slept for days. She told me that she was just going with her friends and exploring the cities, and her phone was silent. She apologized to me for being careless and I let it slide. Hearing her out, I felt she was not the same person anymore. She was never the extroverted, outgoing, party animal she has now become. Her desire to fit in with the college environment and peer pressure were the biggest red flags of hers. I asked her again if she had gone out to that party, the one which my friend mentioned, and she immediately denied it. I took out my phone and showed her the picture. She couldn't process what happened and remained silent, with teary eyes. I asked her who was the guy. She started to cry. She told me it was her friend's birthday and she couldn't refuse and, out of peer pressure she had a few drinks. I told her that she could have told me the truth the first time I questioned her, but I don't know why she hid this from me. She held me and said that she couldn't refuse her friend's request and didn't want to tell me because I would get angry. I laughed and asked her, what happens now? Hiding did more damage to our relationship, and what else could she be hiding? She kept defending herself, and we just sat there, not talking to each other. Finally, I told her that I didn't hate her and I just wanted her to be honest with me. I don't remember the last time we had sex, and it created more suspicions in me because whenever I tried to initiate, she would shut me off, half of the time she was texting on her phone and told me it was her friends. I was so heartbroken that she was not even happy for a single moment to spend time with me. Her stuff was pretty expensive, and she was wearing an expensive watch. I asked her where she got them, and she told me that she won a few awards in that science competition and watch was one of them. I was very disappointed that she didn't even care to inform me about such things as if she was losing interest in me. She only texted me whenever she needed money or had an emergency. Anyway, we finally made out, and she told me she was tired and slept on the other side of the bed. She never let me touch her phone. Earlier, she was not so guarded about her phone, it used to lie here and there and she wasn't bothered if I used it to Google or check the calendar or so, but now the way she was guarding her phone, it was suspicious. After she was asleep, I opened her phone and checked the gallery. There was nothing really suspicious, just she and her friends. I checked the phone and saw a whole lot of social media apps. We never had any of these apps earlier. After joining the college, she told me she was on FB but now seeing all sorts of social media apps was alarming. Also, she never told me about her virtual presence. She seemed to be too active on nearly all these platforms. 
I opened her Instagram account, and there were her pictures of clubs and many more things that were not in her gallery, and that was unbelievable. She broke my trust very badly. Naturally, my curiosity got the best of me, and I looked through her DMs, there was nothing to see until something caught my eye it was a restricted account named Michael. My hands were shivering while opening the text, and it had an eerie vibe. So, I finally clicked on the text, and there it was the truth behind her behavior. The last text was that she was going to her parents' house, and his reply was that he would see her soon baby. She told him that she was going to her parents when she was actually with me. He was the same guy who was sitting next to her in that picture my friend showed. It was devastating. I did everything for her, just for her to betray and cheat on me. I read the whole chat, and it was her senior. They shared nudes with each other and had sex. She also demanded expensive things from him in return, which I failed to do. I realized that all her excuses of being busy with assignments and extra classes were nothing but a lie of lies to sell her body for a few accessories. I tried my best to help her make her future and be a stable and independent woman, and I didn't realize that she actually went pretty low to sell herself off for a few materialistic things. She sold our relationship just to be a social butterfly in college. I was disappointed and surprised because she always had high moral values, but I guess it was all an act. There were text messages where she said that she missed him and sexted. I couldn't stand reading any more of it, so I pretty much freaked out, had no idea what to do, and sat there like a ghost for an hour. I took everything on my phone for proof and decided to ditch her immediately. I wasn't in for any negotiation. Confrontations meant again a bunch of lies and I'm just done with her. It was hard for me to process, but I packed everything and left while she was asleep. I spent the rest of the night, sitting alone at the station and took the first train back to my home. The next day she called me and texted me, but I refused to do anything and just laid back under the circumstances before I decided to cut all the connections off from her, which also meant no money for the college fee. Her fee was due for the next week, and the whole week I kept ignoring her and dealing with the harsh truth on my own. Trust me, it was the cruelest shit that ever happened to me. I got a text from her asking about her college fees. When I was finally done ghosting her, I texted her that I was breaking up with her and she could take care of her fees on her own. She tried contacting me through mutual friends. I already told everyone what happened and asked them not to entertain her. She deserves to be on the street after the shit she pulled and manipulated me both mentally and physically. The next day she showed up at my house. Gladly I wasn't home. My roommate called me that Jules was there, yeah, I had a new roommate after Jules moved out for her college. I told him to say that I wasn't in town and don't know when I would return. I did the same as she did to me back then. She called me non-stop, and I didn't respond. I stayed at my friend's place that night. The next day, when I returned home, my roommate asked me to speak to Jules, she was crying profusely and was really guilty of her actions. He told me that peer pressure sometimes makes us do unethical and immature things. I just nodded. He knew our relationship from the surface but I know how much she has changed and it was just not about peer pressure, she wasn't 18, she is a grown up woman and should know how to keep herself grounded in a situation like that, but she didn't. Update 2, I thought she would get her clues from my ghosting but she didn't. She kept texting me asking for closure, asking for a reason for ghosting her, for breaking up with her. Not only once, but multiple times she showed up at my house. Sometimes, when I used to be at home, I didn't answer the door and left her standing outside but she didn't deter. Ultimately, I had to give up and meet her. What could I do? She was bothering all our mutual friends and my roommate to the point that they requested me to get done with it. I called her, and the way she responded seemed like she had just placed her finger on the answer button waiting for my call. It made me laugh at the realization of how she used to ignore my calls. As soon as she heard my voice, she started crying and pleading with me not to do this. She started with those classic lines of I couldn't live without you, I had dreamt about our future, you cannot ruin this, and all that. I told her to cut the crap out because I'm no longer falling for her fake emotions. I told her I was done being her ATM, she considered me as the source of her money and nothing else. She acted confused and asked me what was I saying. I told her that she could continue with Michael as he was providing her with better amenities than I was. After hearing his name, she went silent. She said there was a misunderstanding and pleaded to meet me once. She said let's sit and sort this out. That sounded hilarious to me. I was like babe, I'm done sorting out with you. I'm out of your way, you can do whatever you want with your life and your body. She tried her last bet of manipulating me using her victim card. She said that you know, if you cut me off, I would never be able to graduate from the college. I said, fine by me. Not my problem anymore. I hung up the call. She called me a couple of times after that, but she stopped bothering my friends and roommate after that. It's been more than a month since then and I'm NC with her since I ghosted her and I plan to remain so. I'm just moving on with my life and don't think about her anymore. Update 3, thanks for all the support. I'm in a much better place mentally. I have moved on. I took a solo trip to the mountains last month and it gave me a lot of mental peace. This is going to be a super mini update. Yesterday was my friend's engagement party. There I got to catch up with other friends, some of them mutual to Jules. 
I got to know that Jules had dropped out of college and she was back in the city working as a receptionist at some small office. It wasn't shocking because I knew that would happen. Looked like it was all just for fun with Michael and when he was done, he moved on. He is a 20YO rich lad, what else do you expect him to do? Marry her and pay for her college fees. She got what she deserved. She bargained her future for temporary adrenaline and expensive items just to show off and come cool in front of her college peers. Now on to the next story. Story 2. My cheating ex-wife left me for her high school boyfriend, but they're still shunned when they visit our small hometown. My wife and I were born and raised in the same small town. I was a few years older than her so we didn't interact until both of us were finished with college and had moved back. She had just come back after finishing school. The two of us bumped into each other in the grocery store and struck up a conversation. I knew of her because it was a small town but I didn't know her personally. She had the same deal with me. After checking out, we talked to our cars, exchanged numbers, and went about our day. From the start, we seemed like a good match. We both wanted to live in the town we were born in and eventually raise a family there. The two of us also both worked in the medical sector so this was another similarity we had. It was slow going at first because neither of us was sure it was going to work, but as time passed it became clear it was turning serious. I always knew that I wanted a wife, kids, a house, and the whole nine yards. She seemed like she did as well so when I proposed it wasn't that much of a surprise. The whole town seemed to be celebrating with us. Like I said, it was a small town. Both our families were well known and had a lot of friends here. I suppose that was why I was so insistent on coming back to eventually live here. It was a great place to just live and raise a family. Once we got married, the two of us decided to rent an apartment while we saved money up for a down payment on a house. Both our parents were more than willing to help us but for now, we just wanted to see how much we could save. I might seem like I'm coming off as straightforward and practical, but I did love my wife very much. I'd never meshed with someone like I did her and I assumed she felt the same. For the first two and a half years of marriage, things were going great. It was around this time, however, that I noticed my wife getting rather short with me. She'd snap at me about things that normally didn't bother her before and it was a little startling. I thought she might have been dealing with some stuff at work so I gave her a little time. After six months the attitude started to change. My wife seemed happy and giddy again, though then something else started to pop up. My wife was always busy. When we did interact things were fine, but this seemed to happen less and less. At the time I was just glad she was no longer snapping at me, but there was this little voice in my head telling me something was off. I just want to tell you that you need to listen to it because usually it isn't wrong. A part of me wanted to ask outright if she was cheating on me, but I didn't know how that was going to go without any evidence behind me. So, when my wife told me she was going to go out with friends, I showed up at that friend's house. They were surprised to see me and instantly looked guilty. It didn't take long to get them to tell me what was going on. So I went home and waited for my wife to come home to confront her about her cheating. The first thing she seemed most upset about when I confronted her was that her friend had broken her confidence. The guy she was cheating on me with was her high school boyfriend who also lived in town and was married. At the time she was treating me terribly, she learned he was taken, which was crazy to me. My wife was married to me. I would think that would have played some factor in her decision making, but it didn't. When she started treating me nicer or what I perceived as nicer she and the app started up a relationship. I was in shock for a while, unsure of what to say or do. Eventually, I asked her why she did this. My wife gave me some crap about her high school boyfriend being her one true love. She didn't think they stood a chance of getting back together because he lived across the country. However, just before he got married he moved back to the town with his wife and thought that was her chance. I asked what about me and she just cried. The tears would have moved me at one point, but no longer. My only response to her was that she would get the divorce she wanted so she could be with her high school boyfriend and precious true love. We had a month to month lease on the apartment so it wouldn't be that hard to get out of it. She told me I could keep the apartment if I wanted and she'd go live with her app. I wanted to mention that the app was married, but I didn't care anymore. My soon-to-be ex-wife was no longer my problem frankly. To my surprise, she did end up living with the app. His wife had left town to go back to be with her parents, leaving his house with an empty spot just for my wife. It was almost so romantic if you didn't realize that both of them had blown up their marriages to be together. Once those two were moved in together and the divorce process started, the rumors started to fly through town. Everyone was eventually coming up to me apologizing about what happened and telling me that they were sorry for how everything went down. I was embarrassed at first for the town to know what happened but then I realized how my ex was being treated. She and her app were essentially being treated like the town pariahs. No one wanted anything to do with them. What they had done was unforgivable in their eyes. It got so bad that the app sold the house, took my ex with him, and left one night. I wasn't upset because I was glad that I would no longer have to see her around town. To think that the town itself had sent her running with her tail between her legs. Anytime my ex came back to visit family, which was a couple of times a year, mind you, the town shunned her. When she brought the app with her, it was even worse. I eventually moved on and met another woman. She was someone who had been in my class. 
Like me, she was also dealing with a divorce because of her husband having an affair. It's not to say the two of us bonded over this, but it was something we could relate to about each other. Now the two of us are married and expecting our first child. We have our own house in the same small town we were born and raised in, which is exactly what I always wanted. It turns out I just wanted it with the wrong woman at first. My ex-wife, as far as I know, is still with the app but I have heard rumors of the two of them fighting in public anytime they visited town. It was fitting to know that the two of them hadn't been able to run off into the sunset like they initially wanted. I am just not going to think about them and will focus on the new life I am building with my second wife.